Hello and welcome to another Hot Rodster review. In this video, I will be continuing my blind review of the series, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, by reviewing the Underground Masquerade arc. It was only 9 chapters long, spanning from chapters 86 to 94, and while it wasn't as good as the last arc, it was definitely a treat to read. Since I treated myself to this amazing arc, you ought to treat yourself to that subscribe button so you'll get my final Vigilante reviews right into your subscription feed. With that being said, let's get into the review. So this was a flashback arc that gave me a bit of insight as to what Knuckle Duster's pro hero days were like. I really enjoyed the expansion of the My Hero lore that I got to see in this arc. The idea that there were underground fight clubs where there are no limitations on using your quirk is just so cool. I could definitely see that being a real thing, especially since a lot of people love sports like boxing, wrestling, and MMA. So seeing these kinds of fights with quirks mixed in just sounded like it would be a lot more fun and exciting. I also got to see more lore on Rappa. It made a lot of sense that he used to be an underground fighter because I remember that in the anime he was just addicted to exchanging fists with his opponents. He's a simple guy. He likes fair fights to the death. It makes him a villain, but he didn't care because it was his passion. And there was something beautiful about that. I mean, it's definitely psychotic, but at least he knows what he wants and that's somewhat admirable. One of my favorite Rapa moments was the introduction when the announcer said, if he meets God, he punches God. If he meets Buddha, he punches the Buddha. If he meets you, I'll give you one guess what you're getting. It was just so funny that it made me laugh and I was surprised when I turned the page to see a familiar character. Another person who I got a bit more lore on was Mirako. She went by Tiger Bunny at the time since she was as fierce as a tiger while having the powers of a bunny. I honestly didn't expect her to show up at all because I didn't know she was super into fighting like that. To be honest, not much about her is known, especially not if you only watch the anime. So there was a lot that could be done with her backstory. But I really liked spending time with her this arc because she's always been interesting to me. She's a fan favorite and I personally just want to know more about her. Another surprise cameo appearance was the Nomu Hood. I didn't I didn't realize who he was at first, but I knew that he had to be someone important because he was so strong. The second he started talking about being the world's strongest, I was able to put two and two together and finally realize that he was Hood, the Nomu Endeavor later took down. His presence further indicated that All For One was involved with this whole thing even though that was obvious already with the Kurugiri portals in the hands that removed people's quirks. But either way, it was cool to see him, especially since if I'm remembering correctly, before he was turned into a Nomu, he was an underground fighter who was obsessed with being the best. He just really fit into the overall theme of this arc, and I thought it was really cool that he got included. I really liked the dynamic between Rappa, Miriko, and O'Clock in these chapters. Their little alliance formed very quickly, but it really just worked, because they all had proper motivations. O'Clock was a hero who was on a mission, and he needed allies. Miriko was a hero in training, so it made sense that she would want to help a real hero do real hero work. Also, she loves to fight, and the job required plenty of that. And like Mirko, Rappa loves fighting as well. Not to mention, O'Clock taunted Rappa by saying he was too scared to do it, which was hilarious. I love the arguments between Rappa and Mirko about what was better, fighting with punches or fighting with kicks. By the way, I'm on Mirko's side on this one since her fight style just looks way cooler. Knowing that these guys had a connection in the past makes me wonder what their interactions would look like in present day. She is a fully fledged hero now, while Rappa really hasn't changed. I'd love to see the meet again, but I doubt that will ever happen. I don't know if I talked enough about the action in this arc, but it was great. It was definitely the most action-packed arc, especially since it only had 9 chapters. This really made me crave an anime adaptation because the action in this arc just goes that crazy. Whether it's Rappa, Mirako, O'Clock, All Might, or Hood, they all just brought this underground masquerade to life with their brutal and violent fights. This kind of action was what I wanted from this series, and it definitely did not fail to deliver in this arc. And I thought that being able to follow Knuckle Duster in his pro hero days, or O'Clock if you will, was really cool, although I wondered why we are getting this story. I hope that this is foreshadowing him returning at some point in the next arc, but I really don't know. I also thought it was very interesting to see how much his fight style differed when he had his quirk. He was much more calculated in his attacks because he got so much more time to figure out how he wanted to fight in the middle of his battle. As Knuckle Duster, he was much more of a planner as he came up with Batman tier plans ahead of time in order to achieve his objective. I just thought that it was really nice that he got a lot of focus in this arc because it allowed me to analyze these differences. Another thing I need to talk about before I end this video is the appearance of the number one hero, All Might. 
I loved seeing him flex his powers in his prime because it's always interesting to see how efficient he was at stopping crime. He's supposed to be this universe's version of Superman, but with the way All Might uses his powers, I feel like he put Superman to shame. One thing that was casually revealed was that even when he was healthy, All Might had a deflated form. Because of that, I have questions since I always thought the deflation happened after his deadly battle with All for One. I feel like this is an inconsistency since in the movie, My Hero Academia 2 Heroes, which I believe Horikoshi claimed was canon, we see All Might in his regular clothes and still in his buff form. Either way, this is a big reveal and it brings up some questions like, is the buff form a product of One For All or is it just a Toshinori gag? Will Deku have a buff form someday as well? Endeavor looks about as buff as All Might, does that mean he has a deflated form as well? I know many of these questions probably won't get answered, but this one scene definitely brought out a lot of questions for me. I really liked how Miracle rejected O'Clock's help at the end because she wanted to make it on her own. She had so much faith in herself that she would be a top hero one day, and she was correct. I know that in the Japanese hero billboard, she ranked number 5, and I believe that she will only continue to climb those ranks. Overall, I definitely enjoyed this arc, but just like the School Days arc, I questioned its relevancy. We kinda see how it all tied together at the end with Izo putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, but this underground masquerade was just one piece. It all probably could have been described in one chapter if that's the only thing about it that will be relevant. I did find it quite shocking to see number 6 kill Izo before he was able to put all of this information together, but what was even more shocking was that he was getting advice from O'Clock. I've seen a previous panel where it looked like O'Clock was giving him advice about his quirk, and I am really confused as to what is even going on. I don't think Knuckle Duster would help someone like number 6, but I guess I could be wrong. The final arc is coming up. I heard that the manga was completely finished and that I should just read until the end of the manga for my next review. One thing I noticed is that this manga switches between hype arc and subpar arcs constantly. For example, the first Queen B arc was amazing, then the Osaka incident arc wasn't all that. The Sky Egg arc was also epic, then the School Days arc was cool but not really relevant to the series, the final performance arc was the best I've read so far, and then the Underground Masquerade arc was good, but again I didn't completely see its relevancy. Now I'm on the last arc. If this trend continues, it is bound to be one of the best arcs of this manga. I wonder if it will end with a bang. I guess the only way to find out is to keep on reading. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly my hero right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been Not Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.